we invite all those parties to get involved. And imagine having 50 people owning a, a farm. Uh, imagine. So we've got 13 farms from all over the country, pulled an investment proposal together, we've got a template on our website, anyone can download this now, which talks about why you're the best farmer, why this farm's the best, uh, and how you're going to make money, uh, and how you can look after the environment as well as a key, key factor for us. And we sat down with this investor just before Christmas last year and went through every proposal, we pulled them apart, found out what was good and what was bad, and we gave that feedback. But at the end of that session, the investor goes, all right, which one? And I wasn't expecting uh, them to say that. And we, and Clara Mark's proposal was just the top, the top proposal. And we said, let's go with them. They then caught up with this investor. They got to know each other. The investor had so much confidence in them because of what they've been doing. They've been leasing land down the road. They've got a business model. They're very clever. They're, they treat it like being an entrepreneur. Uh, and six months later, they're, now, they are, they're on their farm, 100 acres, uh, breeding pigs, a very profitable operation in central Victoria. Um, and they're... They, uh, they co-own the business that sits on top of the land. The, land, the investor owns 100% of the land, but in three years' time, the aspiring farmers will own half of that farm, the land with them, uh, and they'll grow from there. So it's an amazing outcome. And there are thousands ready. We're talking to all these farmers and now talking about their part farmer owner pathway um, solutions. We've got heaps of other case studies, but I've had over a thousand conversations with aspiring farmers all over the country. That same story. I want to be a farmer. It's all I can think about. I don't have the money. Help. We've got members who people signed up and you can check our database to see all these aspiring farmers, but they are everywhere and we're just trying to activate them. So if you're in a community that thinks it's hard to get young people, I can tell you right now, they are ready to go. They just need to know about these opportunities and, and point it in the right direction. Some investor examples. So this investor, this is what I'm very excited about, this investor is ready to go again. So for them, it was the easiest investment they've ever made. They just sat back and had proposals brought to them uh, and they picked for over half a day. And we want to replicate this, they want to invest again, so we're going to go through another program. So we're happy to talk to any community in Australia around how we get that going again. And we know that when we publicise this, we're going to get more investors. I'd love to have a stable of these investors all over Australia, hundreds of them, just ready to back the next generation of farmers uh, because they know how easy it is and how we are stitching up for them a great farm and the best entrepreneur farmer to run it. And who is an investor? This is, most people think that an investor is a high net worth individual in one of these skyscrapers around us, but we're trying to blow up that whole um, uh, understanding that investors are everywhere. Um, we're talking about those high net worths, we're talking about wealthy farmers themselves. There's lots of farmers out there who employ people onto their farm and are just keeping them as employees. And we're often talking about how do you get that, that wealthy farmer to actually invest with you in another bit of land down the road as a farmer and get them invest into these farmers who can build their wealth as well as stay on and manage that farm and that separate farm. Retiring farmers, we see them as investors if they're handing, they're transitioning their farm ownership. Retired farmers, so farmers who have money in the bank trying to figure out how to play the share market. And we're saying, don't worry about that, invest into something you know, into your local community uh, and bring back the centre half forward and the, and the goalkeeper. Uh, locals, uh, people again, wealthy people, and not even necessarily wealthy people, people with money in the banks everywhere wanting to know what to do with it. And this is just about activating people and giving them opportunities. Self-managed super, your families and friends, and then banks. People often uh, bag out banks, but they offer half of the, the capital to buy a farm, which is ridiculous. Um, all you need to do is find the other half. Uh, it can't be that hard. <coughs> Another one we're really excited about is equity crowdfunding. So this ability to own a portion of the land, and this is happening a lot in residential properties, and we're really pushing from a farming point of view. So an organisation called Domacom do fractionalised investment, which is a bit technical, uh, but it all means that you can, for a minimum of $2,500, own a bit of dirt of which someone can farm with you. And the, this means for us, the aspiring farmer can own part of the land as well as lease the land, and also a great model for retiring farmers who want to... They only need to sell 30% of it to get the money they need to go and retire or do what they want to. So it's a great way, as a win-win for all those parties to get involved. And imagine having 50 people owning a, a farm. Uh, imagine how easy it would be to do a working bee. Uh, you get people there come and work for free for a couple of days. They'll buy your produce. They'll want to come stay in your tiny house that you put in the property. Um, you, they're coming back to your community. I think it's just such a massive opportunity that we're only just starting to understand. 
And then regional communities, this is the stuff I'm really excited about around what can regional communities do themselves to bring young people back and, and help uh, retirement age farmers to step back with dignity. dignity. I heard the word shark tank before, um, but I love the idea of a farm shark tank concept where you know uh, the farmers in your district, you can find one or two of those farmers looking to step back and we can put a call out across the country to get the best entrepreneurs to pull a proposal together and we have a town hall meeting uh, and these farmers pitch to, to be the ones to be uh, selected onto that farm. Syndicate investments, locals investing into their community. So there's an excellent example, uh, this guy Stephen Fisher in northwest of Tasmania. He's a dairy farmer and he's thinking about this problem around how do you get next generation farmers onto the land. And he knows how to farm profitably and he said, all right, I'm going to find a farmer and I'm going to put a proposal together. And he had a town hall meeting uh, and that night he had investors to buy the dairy farm. I think it was around $200,000 each, uh, around eight investors, locals investing, and that is doing better than any other investment they could have invested in recently. Um, and they got in a farmer who is actually a builder, uh, but he's now mentored by Stephen uh, and doing a great job. That stuff really excites me as well. What about community farm funds? Uh, so again, because you know your community and because you want to bring back young people to your district, why aren't we sending up si simple funds where you can put $50,000, $100,000, half a million, whatever you want, into a fund which deliberately targets farms to back next generation farmers. Um, and in properties that you understand, you understand the district, you can use your knowledge. Uh, why aren't we setting up these community Bendigo Bank style operations uh, for people to place their money to invest locally? And activating those people who they know, they know there's so many people in the community who knows uh, everybody and the, these advisors, so accountants, lawyers, mayors, people know people. Uh, and this is just about encouraging those people who have those connections to start thinking about who are those retirement age farmers out there that are probably opening, open to thinking about handing the farm onto a kids and not their own. Um, who are those, those young farmers who are probably going to leave because they can't see any opportunities? How do we work with them and get them to hustle and think about, all right, how do we get you to start opening doors for yourself to find some of these farms? How do we get those wealthy individuals who are sitting on money in the bank who could be spending it so much better into their local farms? And these lists here of all the people who we've been thinking about, and we've been trying to hit them up through social media to try and get them thinking differently about all this. But um, the ball's really in their court. It's all about relationships. These people are all trusted. Catchment management authorities, local land services, bankers, uh, succession planners, stock agents, real estate agents, they know everybody. How do we start activating them to start joining the dots? Uh, and a lot of this, of what, again, what we're trying to do is give that hope that it is possible for these tra ownership transitions to happen. They just need those case studies to give them confidence and then they should be start doing the matchmaking themselves, uh, which is what we want to do. Again, you don't, you don't need us for any of this. This is purely about relationships and matching the right people together, have a conversation about, around a farm. So what is needed? We, are, we would love to talk to motivated locals and I think that's the core of this. If we're talking about this from a community point of view, you need one or two champions in each community to go, yes, we want to get more people back uh, and we can help support you or give you ideas at the very least uh, to, to think of some strategies to help bring some young people back. Um, social media is so powerful. I love the idea of local communities saying we are open to next gen farmers and creating a page on Facebook which can get to anyone in Australia. Uh, social media is just the best thing ever invented. Uh, and come talk to us. Uh, we've got plenty of ideas. This is what we do. We're all about matchmaking and coming up with creative ideas specific to your situation because we do want to get young people back and onto, onto farms in your district. And then for us, we, we do think the future of farming is bright. Uh, we just need to get people thinking a little bit differently. Uh, and we are confident we can go a long way to rejuvenating regional communities. Thank you. Good hand, folks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have time for one question. Who's got one more question over there? That was a big one. Okay, we've got the